What's up guys, how y'all doing today? So I'm actually going to meet up with a subscriber to the channel. He lives here in Floripa, Brazil, Florianopolis, and he has an interesting story. So I'm gonna talk to him about cost of living, that kind of stuff here in Brazil, in Floripa. But he got diagnosed with a tumor in his brain last year and he got full treatment here in Brazil. And I'm not sure if you guys knew, I didn't know, but all medical treatment in Brazil is free for Brazilians and also for foreigners. We're gonna talk about that situation, what he went through, because as he told me, it was life changing for him. So stay tuned. I'm walking to his place. This is his neighborhood right here, out in the kind of country on the island, I guess. The countryside inside the island of Floripa. Stay tuned. All right, guys, what's up? So I'm here with uh, Gil. Gilbert for Gil. Gilbert. Yeah, my, my name, and that's another thing with me. My name is Short. My name is Gil. Gil. G I L L, and not Short for Gilbert, or most people think it is Short. For another okay name. yeah all right so i'm here with gil and we're gonna hear about his story what happened to him in brazil uh, he's in florida brazil right now he was traveling the world he actually went to colombia medellin he was traveling and then something happened to him and he ended up staying in brazil uh longer than he expected so let's talk about it so gil kind of tell us your story like how like you were traveling where were you going what was your plans and then what happened well i, I was in brazil and i was going to leave brazil and go to Chile and back to Shuaia, Argentina, where I'd been before, Patagonia. But uh, of course, with Covici, borders closed, everything. But last year I was here in Florinopolis and I began to be dizzy. Had dizzy spells, no idea what was going on. And then I started having difficulty raising my uh, left foot uh -huh. and walking. And I started falling. All this just happened uh, very fast around Easter time last year. And then uh, I fell one morning. They took me to the hospital and they started doing tests. They found out I had a brain tumor. And who, who did your Airbnb host took you to the hospital? Uh, ambulance came, but uh, Airbnb, Airbnb host help. I was upstairs. They put me on this board and lifted me down to the ambulance. Yeah. Okay. I call that my Uber. Uh -huh. My Uber ambulances because I took. At various times, I went from one hospital to another. Nine rides in wow. the ambulance. Nine yeah. hospitals. Or two hospitals, nine rides in okay. the ambulance. So they did tests and they found that you had a, a tumor. A brain tumor. Two weeks later, they did my first surgery, and then uh, later I was at the big hospital, and they sent me over to a smaller hospital on the other side, on the continent side, mm -hmm. Hos Hospital Santa Teresa and they removed the stitches there it got infected mm -hmm. so after i had two more surgeries mm -hmm. so the end result was in the hospital two different hospitals for four months mm -hmm. okay so we'll get right to the point how much does all this cost you david that's another story i went to public hospitals in brazil not after you know we're from the united states not one time has anyone ever mentioned to me money. It's all free. They've never mentioned money. But that is the public health, public huh. hospitals here. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's true because my, my Airbnb host I'm saying that right now, she's a nurse. Uh -huh. And I talked to her about it and she mentioned that everything for public hospitals mm -hmm. is free, 100% mm -hmm. for, for residents and also foreigners. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to you. So, no penny, nothing. No mention, never mention any cost for all those ambulance rides, not and, a thing. And the, the, the time you stay in the hospital, the hospital, the food, the surgeries, nothing. No, no, no mention of money ever. That is crazy. Were you nervous at first? A little bit, but uh, I, I had been told the same as you just described about public hospital. Uh -huh. But I'll, I'll mention one thing. My last two years in the U.S., one year, like I just told you, was in New York City and one year in Miami Beach. But I burned my this foot, and now there's been some problems with my, also before my left foot, I burned it with hot coffee. Mm -hmm. I went to the emergency room in New York City. You would never guess the price of one hospital visit, just a few hours in the hospital. How much? $18,000. Eighteen for a, a, a small burn? Well, yeah, it also got infected, but I went to the emergency room and, and that was the cost, 18,000 U.S. dollars. And what, what, okay, 18,000 U.S. dollars for that. 
And then for what you got done here in Brazil. Four months. A, a surgery to remove your, your a brain tumor. Are you cured? Is it gone? Are you, are you what's it called when you're? Yeah, that's, uh, I was told that there was a possibility that I would have up to two years to learn to walk again. Uh -huh. And after two years, if nothing happened, I, I would never walk again. In about six months or less, the first time I stood up by myself and started walking with a walking cane last October. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I would use the word cured with uh, adjustments. <laughs> right, but no more. A different lifestyle. No more tumor. Uh, there hasn't been any tumor and no mention of cancer, thank God. That is amazing. That is amazing. I mean, almost, I, it's unfortunate this happened to you, but it's fortunate it happened to you while you're in Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> the day, I, like I told you a bit earlier, the day I actually was supposed to return to the United States, when I started getting dizzy, I canceled my flight. But the day I entered the hospital was the day I was supposed to return to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is incredible. And how was how would you classify the treatment? Like, like I've, you've been to the hospitals in the States, and you've been to the hospital here in Brazil. How would you classify the treatment comparing? Actually, I've been to the hospital many times with my parents, but I had not. I've been blessed. Uh -huh. God's blessed me with a good. The last time I was in a hospital, I was seven years old when I had my tonsils taken out. Oh wow! So my whole now that was six age sixty six. Now I'm sixty seven. I've always had good health. I've been to the emergency, uh, emergency clinic or et cetera before in the U.S., but public hospitals here are good, but the first hospital I was at is huge. Mm -hmm. It's good to have family or to have people that will help you, uh, like to go to the bathroom, et cetera, but I had people like visitors of patients in my room that were very helpful to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was it's difficult at times because there's not enough nurses and not enough helpers, you know, to attend to everyone in the public hospital. Okay. Especially the first hospital I was at, like I said, it was huge. Uh huh. So the the treatment, everything's free, but the 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 quality of service is not as good because they're over Maybe, they're but at the same time, I think the same thing happens in United States hospitals. True. Yeah. True. True. Because I've had, I've, I've had similar experiences being in the hospital emergency room with my father in the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Anything else that, that happened to you or anything else you want to add to the story? Well, the good thing uh, after the, the hospital stay, four months, I, I had no idea where I was going, but I went to a house that was described as uh, assisted living. Mm -hmm. There I met a wonderful lady and we became close friends. Mm -hmm. Her name is Hosey, and she helps me a lot, and I care for Hosey a lot. She said it was okay to mention her name, okay. so I just did. Shout out to Hosey. Awesome, awesome. So that's, that, she's, a, she's a Brazilian. You mentioned that. Brazilian, yeah. She speaks Portuguese, and I'm just really, after this long time, beginning to... I learned a lot by listening to Portuguese in the uh -huh. hospital especially, but... I'm now taking online Portuguese lessons. So you understand? And she speaks no English. You understand Portuguese though, like you understand more than you speak. I understand more than I speak, which is usually the opposite. Right. Usually for me, like I uh, speak more Spanish probably and difficulty at times understanding. Uh -huh. It's kind of the opposite with Portuguese. And how how have you been finding uh, Brazilian people? Like you, like that your friend? I mean, they're very helpful. Very. Very helpful. Very helpful. Uh -huh. And like she, she has a wonderful family, and they're very friendly to me. And Brazilians are very helpful out, you know, on the street or wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you're walking with a cane. How how is handicap access here in Brazil? Like getting around? Is it, is it as good as the states? Or, or well, I think facilities. There's less facilities with, like I I found like a lot of there's a lot of hills in Florianopolis and entrances to restaurants and stuff. Mm -hmm is probably not as good as entrance you know as laws in the u.s to have uh ramps and everything ability for handicaps or for wheelchairs and mm -hmm. here i don't think they're available as much mm -hmm. yeah but are you able to get around though yeah okay yeah you mentioned you use a lot of uber and uh uber eats that kind of stuff and yeah, iFood that's true okay very good so 
Anything else you want to add to the, I have no more questions. I think you pretty much covered everything. Okay. Anything else you want to add to the, the video? Yeah. Just uh, don't be shy about traveling. If you're in the United States, I, I started out in Colombia, three months in Medellin, Colombia. Went to Peru briefly, but then spent three months in uh, Valparaiso, Chile, which I uh -huh. love, and three months in Ushuaia. What about Argentina, the, which I love, and Buenos Aires a lot of time, and then a lot of time here in Brazil. What about the cost of living here for you? How much monthly, more or less? Well, this apartment is less than 300 a month. It's a small apartment, mm -hmm. but I, I, I found my places first through Airbnb. I've stayed at some hostels, but usually I stay... When Kaviji happened, I usually tried to get an apartment alone rather than being being in the hostels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and so three hundred dollars a month. What about like total monthly expense around a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars a month? I live off Social Security, and I'm being honest. My Social Security is on the lower end. Okay. Yeah, like I read, and uh, someone made a uh, in your chat made a remark. Mm -hmm. asking about if they could travel and they made twenty three hundred dollars a month social security i wish i had twenty three i wish i had two thousand three hundred dollars a month that's good I money could, i could go pretty much anywhere and live right I live very very well on that amount of money each month <laughs> my income is quite a bit less than that each month are you able to get by and live, oh, live yeah, good yeah, yeah. No problem but it's much easier in South America than paying rent in New York City or Miami. That's for sure. For sure. That's for sure. Hundred percent. So, guys, if you have any other any questions, comment below. Let us know. But Gil, thank you so much for the interview and your thank experience. Thank you, David. And I'll see you guys next next time. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.